Welcome everyone to another episode of AppSec 101. My name is Andrew Garrett and I'm in product marketing here at Microfocus Fortify. I'm pleased to be joined today by Stan Wissman, who is the chief security strategist here at Microfocus. He served as the chief information security officer for Fannie Mae prior to joining us here in 2014. And with regards to AppSec, Stan started the Nova OWASP chapter. He co-chaired a committee for the DHS Build Security In initiative. And he also helped start the application security program at Fannie Mae. So as usual, I'm, I'm always really excited to, to speak with Stan. He's got a lot of background, a lot of experience in the industry. Stan, to start things off today, uh, our topic is DevSecOps. So let's just start with a basic overview, maybe for those that haven't heard the term DevSecOps before, what does that really mean? Well, DevSecOps is an extension of DevOps and is sometimes referred to as secure DevOps. Um, the, the goal of DevSecOps is to make security part of the software development workflow uh, with secure coding best practices and, and testing automation rather than bolting it on at the end of the life cycle. This is commonly referred to as shifting security left or shift left. And this shift is sort of upending the traditional notions of how, when, and where security controls can be integrated into software development. And it's challenging the once siloed groups um, to find ways to work together to develop rapid, but also secure code releases. And why is DevSecOps important? You mentioned, you know, rather than bolting it on later in the development life cycle, but uh, what are the problems of maybe bolting it on later and, and why does it need to be integrated? Well, if you think about DevOps and part of its purpose is to increase the, the velocity of getting software out of production, right? And so the faster you release software into production, the faster vulnerabilities can be released as well. Uh, without security built in, DevOps can you know, rapidly increase that uh, application layer attack surface that an organization has. So if, if DevSecOps is so important, why do we not hear about it as often as, as we hear about DevOps? Well, you know, DevOps can mean different things to different people and organizations. And ideally, honestly, security should be implied right, as, as part of the requirement for a successful DevOps implementation. There should be no need to differentiate and add the SEC in there. And some people don't do that. They just do it with DevOps. Um, security should already be embedded. Um, however, you know, while, while one of the main promises of DevOps is this collaboration between the different teams, you know, the development team, the IT ops team, the security team, quality teams, um, sometimes security teams are left out and are nowhere to be found in that conversation. Um, and, and the root cause of that sometimes is that developers or the IT ops side, um, may, they may care about security, but they may think of it as being taken care of somewhere else down the line. Uh, it's already under control by another team. Um, they may not even be aware of who's actually doing security, but they think it's being taken care of. And uh, the security team sometimes is like disconnected from both development and operations. Um, so that's why, you know, it's important sometimes to emphasize that security is embedded and thus use DevSecOps or secure DevOps in your, your language to really emphasize that, that point. Okay, so a, a moment ago you mentioned um, shifting left and shifting security left. So what are some ways that developers can make sure that they're actually doing this in the development life cycle? Well, I, I think that developers, you know, will fix security weaknesses in their applications, either because they, they feel accountable for security outcomes or because there's some kind of check along the way to production uh, around security. And if dev teams have a mandate or there's a government standard or policy that they fix security vulnerabilities, like other high or critical vulnerability or defects, um, I think high performing teams will naturally start shifting their security testing to the left over time um, because they understand that they need to fail fast and find flaws and, and defects as early as possible in that life cycle. And it, just because it's a security defect, it doesn't matter. They're, they need to do that um, quickly. 
Um, a, a common way of, of shifting left is embedding static application security testing within the CI/CD pipeline. And you know, static scans focus on finding security weaknesses in the code itself. Many conduct static scans on nightly builds for code committed during the day and integrate SAS testing, that's the terminology for static application security testing, with the build or CI server. You can also enable developers to scan code as they write it. They can receive instant feedback on issues that might cause security uh, weaknesses or, or vulnerabilities in their code base. Dynamic security scans look for vulnerabilities in, in real time while the application is, is running, executing, and is usually used later in the life cycle. Uh, sometimes you see uh, QA teams run it. Um, sometimes you run it on production apps as continuous monitoring. However, we're starting to see a shift of dynamic application security testing left as well. Um, that's starting to be a trend. Automated DAS scans can monitor for changes in, in your code and just scan that portion of the application that's changed and look for weaknesses there. And honestly, the best practice is to leverage both. You know, and we see some of the high performing teams leverage Fortify SCA or Fortify and Demand for static, as well as dynamic testing using Web Inspect as a way of integrating that into their lifecycle to get both advantage of both kinds of testing. Yeah. And I, I like the term fail fast. I, th I think that's a, a good, good, good point you bring up. You want to fail fast. You want to resolve those vulnerabilities as quick as you can. So uh, looking ahead, what are some considerations when automating security into the DevOps lifecycle? Well, whether you're doing static, dynamic, or both, you know, one of your key objectives is to make the security testing as transparent as possible to the developers. If developers have to go out of their way to initiate scans, uh, there's a good chance that they're going to abandon the scanning tool. They're not going to engage unless they're required to do so. Also, a, a key to success when introducing static and dynamic security testing is to, to think small. So, you know, I would recommend like turning on one or two security checks at a time and get your developers used to the idea of having security testing incorporated into their workflows. You know, start with SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and then over time, add to it. Um, so, you know, once your developers get a handle on how, you know, these tools can help them identify vulnerabilities and, and, and hopefully it's, it's not that much of an additional burden to them, they're much more likely to want to work with them. Once successful, you can move on and, and you know, and add on uh, additional categories um, to the ones you started with. I think if you, if you just go in as a security professional and shake the tree and are very disruptive, disruptive to their processes and, and ask them to do way too much too early, um, I think it just creates conflict. And, um, you know, typically you're viewed as an outsider that doesn't get what their, their true requirements are. And so I think, again, start small at the beginning and, and put some success behind you before taking the next step. Yeah, I think that's some great advice. Uh, I think sometimes, you know, security professionals, they may look at security as this overwhelming process, but you don't need to dump it on your developers all at once. I, I like that approach of kind of easing them into it, getting them used to it so that it becomes a part of their routine. Exactly. I like that. Yeah. So when we look at um, testing, the, there's two kind of aspects to it. There's the speed, you know, how quickly can you get it done? And then there's also the accuracy. So in, in your experience, which, which is more important? Is it more important to have the speed? Is it more important to have the accuracy? Uh, what, what would you say? Uh, unfortunately, both are important. Um, you know, you, you need in, in this day and age of, of uh, with the velocity we have as far as the development processes, um, you need to have the speed uh, to get the, the scan results back to the developers in a very timely manner. And at the same time, you want to have accurate results. Uh, so you, you, you need to have, um, we believe it's very important that the scan results are high quality 
and provide you comprehensive coverage of known vulnerability categories. That's one of the, of the, of the key principles that we operate under. And, and developers need to help identify those vulnerabilities quickly and, and prioritize what they need to remediate first. And so you should look for solutions like what we have with Fortify to help do that. And, and we've made great strides also on the performance side of things. And so if you look at the, the, the time to get back the results, whether it be static code on-prem, whether it be our Fortify on demand service, web inspect, we have done a lot of work to actually decrease the amount of time it takes to get back scan results to you. Uh, another, another issue though in this context is around false positives and, and, and Let's face it, I mean, false positives can be an absolute killer in a DevOps environment. You need to build trust with your dev teams and, and wasting their time on addressing false positives is a good way of losing that trust. Um, so you may have to set expectations with some of the initial scans that you're doing of a code base uh, that, you know, you need to do joint reviews with them with the dev side and the security side sitting at the table reviewing the results and, and get a good baseline. And then after that, you can have much faster scans um, because you have an agreement on what's important and what's not. Well, Stan, let's talk for a little bit about how we can help ensure that security isn't left out of DevOps. What, what would be some of your recommendations? Well, again, I, I think one of the challenges we face, even though there's a promise of collaboration that DevOps gives us, um, many times these dev teams and the security teams and the ops teams operate in their own silos. And have their own agendas, their own tasks. Um, until organizations treat security requirements, practices, and issues, and remediation just like the rest of, you know, quality assurance testing, uh, a requirement that you know must be met before you push uh, a release into production. Uh, I think security will always be behind the curve. Uh, and and honestly, I think it's a, a culture change. Organizations that are successful, most successful, are able to change the culture to a security culture. And a sustainable security culture requires everyone in the organization to buy in, grassroots as well as top down. And it's not something that grows in a positive way organically. I mean, you must invest in that culture um, with your development teams and, and, and training developers as part of it um, as, as a way of getting their light bulbs to turn on and, and hopefully they, they, they perceive the, uh, the ways in which misuse can occur um, with their software and um, why they need to you know, embrace a security culture. So when you talk about embracing a security culture, do developers really need to be trained on how to embrace a security culture? To, you know, they're focused on development, they're focused on on, on their code. So right. do, do they need to be trained on how to develop secure code? Well, you would like to hope that they, they already know how to do that, right? That they got taught that in college or they, they picked it up along their career, but you can't make that assumption. But they, they also don't really understand that inherently what they're producing is insecure. So uh, secure development best practices are, are not embedded in most um, it's computer science programs, and, and it's not a priority many times for development teams to embed that awareness into their developers. They're, as you said, trying to build certain functions into the apps. Um, so you got to help close that knowledge gap. Um, I think increasingly folks are looking to try to make it exciting or a bit interesting by gamification rather than requiring some kind of CBT set of courses on secure coding best practices you know, use some kind of engaging set of exercises where developers are, are tasked with finding ways to attack one another's applications or even attack their own application. Um, and this helps, I think, get them to think about code a little differently and how potentially, rather than just the happy path, there, you know, abuse and misuse can occur with applications uh, and it changes their mindset. Uh, however, sometimes it's a challenge to get dev managers even those who support security training on board with the idea of having developers take one or more days off work to, you know, hack their, their applications. Um, so there are things out there like Secure Code Warrior, uh, which we integrate with, it is, a, is a good alternative that, that gamifies the, the learning process, but it's not taking them out of the dev process 
for an extended period of time. So that's certainly something I recommend checking out. Yeah, and I personally am all for the gamification. I think that's great. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe just to wrap things up, let's take a step back and maybe look to the future. Do you have any final thoughts on maybe the future of DevSecOps and where it's headed? Well, I think it's still emerging. Uh, I think that, you know, again, we are, we are evolving our tool set to help organizations figure out ways how to quickly identify vulnerabilities and weaknesses in their applications in these agile and DevOps kind of processes. And we're constantly evolving, but I think it's becoming more and more apparent to people that in this day of continuous integration and rapid releases, they can't forget about security. So, you know, that, that time frame has, is, is behind us for mo many organizations. They, they do get it that they under, understand that they have to do something. They just don't know how. And, and I think that's the journey that many, many people are on is trying to figure out how to get started and how to ultimately, again, build that, that security culture where it's just expected, just like high quality code. And, you know, I think that's an important point you bring up. Sometimes you just need to get started. You don't need to feel like you're at the top of your game, you know, right from the get go. Sometimes right. it's just a matter of getting it started, implementing something, and then you can build on it as you go. Exactly. Well, Stan, I, I want to say thank you to you for uh, cutting out some time to speak today about DevSecOps. And to our viewers, if you have any comments, please feel free to comment below and, and give this video a like. And I think we're going to provide some links at the bottom that they may also want to check out. Um, yes. So. Yeah, we'll include some some links in the description as well. And we, we hope to see you again in the future in another episode of AppSec 101. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Andrew.